for the capitalist class. It's democracy for them. Right. Uh, they tell you, we have free speech. Indeed we do. But how many of us working class people control printing presses? Hmm? In the socialist countries, that's a part of democracy, is that workers can produce their writings <laughs> and have state subsidies to produce their own newspapers, their own programs. It's kind of like the SPNN principle on a mass scale. That's part of democracy. Um, it sounds like a plug for SPNN. So there is socialist democracy and capitalist democracy. Under capitalism, democracy's content is democracy for the capitalist class. Just like if we look at all democratic systems. Now, when we think of democracy, we think of uh, the model of Athens, right? Way back all of these years ago. They say that's a democratic society. And yet that was a class debated society that was based upon a system of slavery. That's what was known as democracy. You look throughout history, you got democracy for the slave owners, democracy for the feudalists, and democracy for the capitalists. Right? Uh, what we work for is democracy for the broad masses of the working class. We want to extend the democratic rights under socialism for the working class. We want to give democracy a real content, not just a formal phrase. Uh, we want, you know, our working class to have power. And our working class won't have it any other way but for there to be democracy. But not democracy for them. Okay? Not democracy for the Klan to come marching into our neighborhoods and lynch our children. Not democracy for the for the parasites, the Rockefellers, the, the Trumps, to come exploit our labor, to come profit off of our children. Okay? So that's where democracy for the broad masses restricts the rights. And, and really, our working class wouldn't have it any other way. Of the few parasitical, reactionary, capitalists, they're thugs, they're butchers, they're carrier-ons. Socialist democracy will have done with all of that and increase democratic rights and give meat and bones and potatoes to it for real working class people, the vast majority of this country. I think uh, the point that you made earlier that mm -hmm. uh, when our country was formed, the only people who had the rights were wealthy white planters and merchants. The vast majority of the population, white women, white men, and uh, slaves did not have those democratic rights. Throughout a process that went on for 200 years, we see uh, the blossoming of democracy because people fought for it in this country. Now, the whole question of socialism and democracy I cannot conceive of people wanting socialism without democracy. Uh, one of the things that we have learned throughout the years is that you cannot impose socialism. People will have to, have to want it. By nature, that would be democratic. Now, Gus Hall has a term that he calls Bill of Rights Socialism for the U.S. Uh, socialism in the U.S. will reflect some particularities of our country, but it will also reflect the socialism of the uh, of the socialist commonwealth, which which will world socialism, in other words. The question that that you are really asking is that what happened in Eastern Europe and China and these con these countries, and one problem that they had why their democratic revolutions could not come to their conclusion is uh, the struggle between socialism and uh, capitalism throughout the world. The uh, U.S. Uh, basically put so much pressure on these uh, countries that they had to divert so much of their uh, wealth and their intellectual uh, uh, manpower towards defense. So it became... Towards defense? Be, because, uh, defense. Mm. Defense yeah. against uh, the U.S. 
So what we had a, a situation with is uh, socialism was built, they were building socialism under the gun, okay? Okay. Uh, they did not have the opportunity to build socialism in a peaceful world environment. I see. Okay. Um, Could I speak a little yeah. bit more on that too? Yeah, briefly. We're actually winding down and I wanted to give some closing thoughts, so go ahead. All right. So, you know, I've read the Constitution, several editions of the former Socialist Soviet Union. Talk about democracy, man. You've got guaranteed employment, guaranteed old age care, guaranteed health care, um, guaranteed laws against racism, guaranteed women's rights enshrined in law. You have all of these democratic rights. That is socialism. That is working class democracy. That is how it differs than capitalist democracy. Mm. Um, I wish we had more time. This time went by way too fast. I've made uh, several good speeches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, we didn't talk about Cuba. I think I, I felt like we probably should have at least touched on the situation with Cuba. Um, I guess we're just going to have to do another show sometime. Um, uh, but. Um, I wanted to first of all give you guys an opportunity to. I know there's a couple of websites that you guys have. Um, the Communist Party in Minnesota has a website, um, and then uh, the newspapers at the People's Weekly World. Um, I don't know if you wanted to show people the. Uh, is this an official communist newspaper? Is that is that Quite accurate correct. to say? Quite correct. Uh, this is our newspaper right here, the People's Weekly World. Where else are you going to see a newspaper with a title like North Carolina Smithfield Workers Win Against the Odds? Where else are you going to see this? Look at this. You got labor here, right? You got people marching against the School of Americas. You got janitors in Houston. You got international coverage. Uh, you got Goodyear workers in here, airport workers. You got an article about Columbia here. Uh, <laughs> racism, articles against racism. This is the People's Weekly World. Uh, folks in Minneapolis can sometimes find it at the various stores around town, but I would say uh, if you can't, just go to the website at www.pww.org. Okay. You like that? I just learned in the last year how well, to like give cert websites. Certainly, uh, uh, most <laughs> of us are familiar that uh, the the corporate media, the Star Tribune, the Pioneer Press, the, yeah. all the television uh, stations other than SPNN um, and, and you know, the local cable access shows uh, basically neglect any news about labor, labor struggle, or at least they don't have a specific section um, designated for labor. Uh, they'll have a business section, but there won't be a section about labor. From and, a positive one. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that 5% is Consider the bourgeois or the or the proletariat, uh, or, or the uh, uh, I'm sorry, five percent of the bourgeois, or the ruling elite, mm -hmm. and then ninety five percent of us are labor. So uh, we're out of time. Uh, Michael Wood, thank you so much for joining us well, for, thank you for our world us. today. Harry McAllister, uh, it's a pleasure, and thank uh, you, Harry. we'll see you probably, if not back in the studio, at least out in the streets. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you.